Hi guys, welcome back to a, another Mr. Hutton science video. Today we're going to be looking at titration calculations. So before we get started, once again, just make sure your mobile phones are off, you've been to the toilets, you've got yourself a drink, and a pen and paper to write with and answer some questions. Right, titration questions. There's a few things that this is going to um, that you're going to need to know, and a few things to to run through just before we get started. They allow us to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. So regularly in a titration question, you'll have information about a solution, and you'll need to find the concentration of another solution. Uh, typically, there'll be acid-base titrations. The the acid is usually in the burette, but not always. So do do be careful when you're you're looking at the diagrams and the explanations. Uh, make sure you know which which solution is in the burette and which one is in the conical flask. Uh, the alkali usually is in the conical flask and there's some indicator added. Um, some of the indicators you might use will be phenolphthalein, methyl orange, methyl blue. And the end point is the point at which the indicator changes color to show that the neutralization has occurred. So the, the best way to be successful with titration calculations is you need to be able to balance equations and you also need to be able to rearrange uh, equations and extract data from a question. Okay, Sometimes you might have to extract that from a written paragraph and other times it might be in the form of a table with some results. And we'll go through both of those in today's video. Right, maths for titration. So in order to do the calculations, you do need to be able to rearrange equations. And the equation that you need to be able to rearrange is concentration equals moles over volume. So concentration, as we've seen in the videos previously, expressing concentrations. Um, if you're unsure about that, then watch that video first before coming back to this. Uh, and in titrations, we usually look at uh, solutions that have a concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. So that's moles divided by decimeters cubed. Um, and you need to be able to rearrange that. All right. So often we're going to be using the equation moles equals concentration times volume. OK, so that's moles. And then the concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed and the volume in decimeters cubed. Often in the titration, the uh, equipment you'll be using will measure solutions in centimeters cubed. So you need to be able to convert from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed. Now, previously in expressing concentrations, we've done this, but just, just to help you now, when we convert between centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed, we divide by a thousand. And going the other way from decimeters cubed to centimeters cubed, you multiply by a thousand. So that changes that equation there. So we'd now have moles equals concentration times volume over a thousand. All right, titration readings. So when you're doing a titration, hopefully you've done one at school. If you haven't yet, then it's likely you'll be doing one soon. The titrations, you need a table for your results. OK, we've got a table here and you can see that there's a, a rough trial to start with and then the second, uh, third and fourth. OK, so you have to know how much you started with. And that's what you put as your start volume and then you record where you are at the end point, which is your end volume, and then you can calculate how much you've actually used. There's a couple of things to remember, though, before you get going with this. Your reading must end with a 0 or a 5. It'll almost certainly be to two decimal places with the equipment you're using. So, for example, you'll have 14.15, 6.00, or 23.30. Now, if you look at the diagram of the meniscus there, you can see that you need to get your eye at a level with the solution. Because of the meniscus, Okay, if you're looking from above or below, you will misread the actual measurement. So you need to look directly across. And you see this one is at, uh, what have we got there? We've got 34.60. Okay, If that meniscus was sat between uh, 34.6 and 34.7, we could say it was 36.05. Um, Have I got that right? Uh, let me just think. 
So we've got 34.6 is where it is. If it was between 34.6 and 34.7, we would say it was 34.65. Okay, so it must end in a zero or a five. A little bit of confusion there on my part, apologies. Um, do go back and just listen to that part again if you need to, uh, just to make sure you're, you're, you're fully um, okay with that part. Uh, the second bit in the bottom left there, you've got concordant results. So these are results that are within 0.1 centimeters cubed of each other. You need to keep doing your titration until you get um, at least two concordant results. Even better if you get three, but two concordant results is where you need to be as a minimum. So you would do some readings. Say that the first one, you've you filled up your burette to uh, zero centimeters cubed. You've done your titration and the end point was at 17.30. Okay, so overall you've used 17.30 centimeters cubed. Okay, so now you know roughly what you need. You do your second titration. And this time you start where you finished off at 17.30 and you run the solution through until you get neutralization. And this time it's at 33.85 and you do the calculation and that means you've used 16.55 centimeters cubed. So the next one, we've had to top it up a bit. So we've topped up our burettes, and so we're now starting at zero, um, at 5.00 centimeters cubed, and we use a total of 16.80 centimeters cubed, and we don't have any concordant results yet, so we still need to carry on. So the final one we've done here, 21.80 centimeters cubed is where we start, and we finish at 38.25 centimeters cubed. So we've used 16.45 centimeters cubed. And as we can see, we've got some concordant results there. Okay, 16.55 and 16.45. We then use those results in order to calculate an average. And if you remember, for an average, you need to add your data together and then divide by the total number of data points. So here we've got an average teacher of 16.55 plus 16.45 divided by two to give us 16.50 centimeters cubed. Right, so answering questions on this, we now know how to do the readings, okay, how to record the data, but what about answering questions on titrations? Much like reacting masses, this is gonna is going to be a seven step process. Okay, you can see the steps here. If you want to write those out now, um, so you've got those by your side when you're answering these questions, that would really help. Um, and I'll just quickly run through what you need to do. So step one, write out the symbol equation. Okay, sometimes this will be done for you. Uh, other times you, you'll need to actually write out an equation from the, the wording of the question. Uh, make sure the equation is balanced is step two. Step three, you're just going to write down volume, concentration, and moles. Uh, step four, fill in all the information you know from the question. Step five, calculate the moles of a known solution. Okay, so you'll have two bits of information that can help you to calculate the moles. Step six, use the molar ratio to determine the moles of unknown solution. And then step seven, calculate the concentration of the unknown solution. So very, very similar to reacting masses. Um, we're just using different equations um, and we're looking at solutions and their concentration. Right, so let's have a look at the question then. Okay, so here we've got uh, 25 centimeters cubed of 0 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide was transferred into a conical flask. It took 12 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid to reach neutralization. What is the concentration? Right. There's a seven step process to what to how we answer this. So remember, step one was the equation. Okay, so we've got sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid reacts to give us sodium chloride and H2O. Step two was balancing, balancing that equation. This is already balanced, so we don't need to add anything to it. So we're straight on to step three where we write down the volume, concentration, and moles. Uh, and after that, we can go on to step four, where we fill in information from the question. So from the question above, we can fill in the, the, the following information. We know there's 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide, we know the concentration of it, and we know it took 12 centimeters cubed 
of hydrochloric acid to neutralize it. So now that we've got that information, we can do volume times concentration uh, in order to calculate the number of moles. But remember, the volume is in centimeters cubed, so you're going to need to divide by a thousand to be into decimeters cubed. So step five is calculating the moles of the known solution. So there we've done 0 0.115 times 25 divided by a thousand. Okay, and that's given us our moles. So step six, we're looking at using that molar ratio, which is one to one in this case. So we're going to have the same number of moles of hydrochloric acid, which makes uh, that step very, very easy. And then we're going to work back now. Okay, so this time, in order to work out the concentration, we're going to have to do moles divided by volume. Okay, and again, the volume is over... Um, is in centimeters cubed, so you need to convert that to decimeters cubed. There's two ways we could do this. So we could do 0 0.00288 divided by 12 times a thousand, okay? Or you could do 0 0.00288 open brackets, 12 divided by a thousand, close brackets, okay? I'll show you that just now. So there we go, we've, we've calculated step seven. We've calculated the concentration of the hydrochloric acid needed to neutralize uh, the 25 centimeters cubed of um, 0 0.115 moles per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide. So I'll go on to another question just so we can go through this again. Um, if you want to pause the video, rewind it, and just go through those steps again, then by all means do that now. Okay, this question, uh, we've got 15.35 centimeters cubed of sulfuric acid, uh, and that was used to neutralize 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. Uh, sodium hydroxide had a concentration of 0.204 moles per decimeter cubed, and it's asking us to calculate the concentration of the sulfuric acid. Seven step process again. So step one, we need to write out our equation. So there we go. And step two, we need to balance the equation. So this time we've got two uh, NaOH, okay? And that gives us two lots of water on the right-hand side. Step three is simply writing out volume, concentration, and moles. And then step four, we're adding the information we know from the question. So we know this 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. We know the concentration of it, and we know it took 15.35 centimeters cubed of um, sulfuric acid to neutralize and we're trying to work out the concentration of the sulfuric acid so firstly step five is to work out the moles of the the known solution we've got there so we can do 0 0.204 times 25 divided by a thousand remember moles equals concentration times volume so we've just got that now uh, and you may have noticed i accidentally skipped forward a bit um, and you'll see that we've got a two to one ratio now. So we're looking at step six next is where we're, we're using the molar ratio to determine the moles of our sulfuric acid. So we can see it's two to one. So we're going to have to divide our moles by two. So there we go. We've got 0 0.00255 moles of sulfuric acid, the H2SO4. And again, we can now uh, use the moles and the volume, okay, multiply, uh, so divide 0 0.00255 by 15.35 times a 1,000 uh, to give us our concentration, or 0 0.00255 divided by, open brackets, 15.35 over a 1,000, close brackets, okay? Either one of those would give you, give you the same answer of 0 0.166 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, again, if you find this a bit confusing, then stop the video, just go back um, and play through it again, step by step. It's very much like reacting masses. So if you were happy with the reacting masses uh, videos that we've done, then, then you should be finding this concept quite straightforward. Let's have a look at another example. Okay, this time 25 centimeters cubed of arsenic acid, H3ASO4, required 37.5 centimeters cubed of 0 0.100 moles per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide, V2. 
for neutralization. Okay, these questions are a bit wordy, okay, and so you do need to find, uh, extract the information from the question. So the first step is step one, where you're going to write out the equation. Uh, so there we go, we've got sodium hydroxide plus the arsenic acid, which is given to you in the question, so you don't need to worry about working the formula out for that. Um, but you do need to double check now for step two, is, is this equation balanced? So here we go. Now it is balanced. We've got three sodium hydroxides and three waters to balance that out for us. Step three is quite straightforward. We're using volume concentration of moles down the left-hand side. And then step four, add the information from the question. Okay, hopefully you're following through with this now. You may have paused the video to write out the equation, but do follow through as we go. And step five, we're calculating the moles of our known solution. So that's our sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we've done 0 0.11, 0 0.100 times 37.50, and then divided by 1,000 because it's in centimeters cubed. And we can see from the equation it's 3 to 1. So in order to get the moles of our arsenic acid, we need to divide by three. Okay, so we've got 0 0.00125 moles. And then again, we can use these numbers now, so our, our moles and our volume, to calculate the actual concentration. So we've taken our moles and divided it by the volume to give us the concentration of 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay. It's been a long video so far, but if you are confused by any of that, then do go back and pause the video. Just make sure you're following it step by step by step. It's Like I've said, it's very much like reacting masses. And if you follow this process, all right, then you shouldn't get into trouble. Areas where people struggle is the difference, is, is converting between the centimeters cubed and decimeters cubed and getting dividing by a thousand or timesing by a thousand wrong. Okay, so... What you might want to do is, is right away at the start, you might want to just convert all of your volumes to decimeters cubed. And then you can just put that data into your below your equation. Okay. Right. If you're not going to rewind, if you if you're happy with what's going on, there's some questions for you coming up. So we'll have a look at those now. And the questions we've got here, there's four questions with um, you've got to do various things, but with all of those, you are going to have to write out an equation. So there's a couple of things there that you you might not be familiar with. So by all means, use use Google or or another source to find out um, the the actual equations if you're unsure. Um, but make sure you balance those equations and then follow it through the normal um, five steps that you'd have after those two steps. Okay. Pause the video now. Attempt those questions and then I'll reveal the answers in a moment. Right guys, you're ready for the answers, here they are. So if you mark your work or make any corrections, if you're unsure where you've gone wrong, then please do see your teachers or drop me a note uh, below in the comment box and uh, I'll see if I can help. But you, you may be a few decimal places out with a few things because you've used a different number of significant figures in your calculations, that's fine. Um, but if you're finding that you're getting very different answers, um, then you've probably gone wrong somewhere along the way and you just need to double check some of your work. So if, if you go back through the video and just see if you've made any mistakes and and then um, then come back to these and see if you can do them again. Like I said, any issues, then drop me a comment at the bottom. Uh, thanks for watching. It's been another Mr. Hutton Science video. Check out your notifications for the next Mr. Hutton Science video.